Hi, my name is Donald Stater. I'm a senior pain management and opioid policy advisor with the Colorado Hospital Association. I'm also an emergency physician who practices at Swedish Medical Center. Today, Colorado Hospital Association is proud to present our series on procedures that you can use in the emergency department to reduce pain and also reduce opioid usage. In this video, we're going to learn about fascia iliaca blocks for the treatment of pain for hip and lower extremity fractures. There are few things in this world as painful as breaking your femur or breaking your hip. And while opioids and ketamine definitely have a role to play in analgesia for this type of pain, the most effective thing we can do for our patients is to perform one of these blocks. The great thing is it's safe, it's fast, and it's effective in the emergency department while patients await surgery. Now, in terms of patient outcomes, patients do much better when we perform these blocks. They have shorter length of stay, they have better pain control, they have less delirium when they're in the emergency department. It really is an evolving standard of care which you should be participating in. To learn about fascia iliaca blocks, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Dylan Loyton and also Nate. Nate was mountain biking when he unfortunately fell onto his right hip and was unable to walk afterwards. He was brought to us by EMS and when we examined him, had signs of a likely femur fracture, proximal hip fracture. His leg was externally rotated, it was shortened. And when you look at the x-ray on the screen right now, you can see that he has a pretty significant fracture and with it, pretty significant pain. So let's grab the items you'll need to perform the procedure. Bupivacaine 0.25% or Ropivacaine 1%, a 60 ml syringe, an 18 gauge needle, a one and a half inch 27 gauge needle with which to anesthetize the patient's skin, a blunt tipped anesthesia needle with extension tubing, a chloroprep or alcohol pads, and a pair of gloves. Complications of fascia iliaca blocks are rare but can be significant. They include allergy to the medication, localized skin reaction, infection, hematoma, injury to either artery or nerves, but the most significant reaction can be an intravascular injection of either pupivacaine or ropivacaine that can result in systematic toxicity. This can result in either cardiac arrest or arrhythmia. These are extremely rare, especially when ultrasound guidance is used. But these should be discussed with the patient and written or verbal consent should be obtained prior to performing the procedure. So let's hand it over to Dr. Loyton to explain how to perform a fascia iliaca block and also the anatomy that you're going to have to be familiar with in order to do one. Great. So yeah, this is a really simple procedure. We like the fascia iliaca compartment block, both because it's simple, really easy to perform, it's quick, and it's very, very safe. We make it even safer uh, by using an ultrasound to guide us. So I have Nate's groin exposed, and I'm just palpating um, the anterior superior iliac spine right here, and then his pubic tubercle or pubic symphysis, which, rather, which is right here. And so the inguinal ligament runs right across here, and I'm palpating right now and feeling his femoral arterial pulse, which is bounding nice and strong. The next thing I'm going to do is clean the skin over the groin. And this is a clean procedure, but it's not, we don't typically perform it, in, it, it with a full sterile prep or drape. Rather, it's sort of similar to placing an IV. We're not putting any indwelling catheters in here. This is just a skin puncture. So I would use chlorhexidine or an alcohol wipe or both and just generously clean the area there. The next thing I'm going to do is get my warm ultrasound gel and I'm picking up my high frequency probe. Just making sure I understand the orientation of the probe on the screen. And then what I'm going to do is put a generous amount of warm gel there, right over where I felt the pulse essentially. And then I start by getting a little gel on the probe and I move up over the anterior superior iliac spine and I, I visualize that on the ultrasound screen there. And then as you watch my placement of the probe, I like to keep the probe parallel to the inguinal ligament. You will see some videos describing it at a right angle, which gives you just a different view, but essentially but both are, are equally valid approaches. I basically come I'm sliding right down the inguinal ligament until I see a screenshot uh, uh, where I have a view both of the femoral nerve, the femoral artery, and the vein. On this shot, what you see in the middle of the screen is the femoral artery. 
it's round and it's pulsatile, and you'll see the pulsations in a second when we unfreeze it. Just medial to that is the femoral vein, and that's a collapsible structure, and you'll see me blot it uh, with the ultrasound, and you'll see its collapsibility. And then you see two very parallel bright lines running superior. Yeah, right there. And so that's the, the fascia iliaca is the deeper line there, and the uh, fascia lata is uh, the more superficial line. And those are what we're going to be puncturing with the needle when we come under. Now, in the sort of bright area that's not very well defined on this view, uh, what you see there is basically the femoral uh, nerve right there. And oftentimes, it'll show up as a brighter, more distinct object, but it's actually pretty well visualized right there. And then the big dark area to the lateral side of the screen there, that's the iliacus muscle. And that is basically what you're your sort of target that's going to occupy most of your visual field during this procedure. We're going to come down medially at about a 45 degree angle heading towards the midline and we're going to pop through the fascia lata and then we're going to pop through the fascia iliaca which lies right over the surface of that iliacus muscle. Just deep to that is going to be the obturator nerve, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve running right over that muscle and as well as that coat covering kind of lifts up and goes over the top of the femoral nerve. So this is again a compartment block. We're actually blocking all three of these nerves within, within this fascia iliaca compartment. Okay, so I'm picking up a little bit of local anesthetic and I'm gonna make a little skin wheel. Pretty sharp, but it won't last long. Okay, and I'm, you see I'm coming in right on the edge of the probe. One, two, three, and I'm gonna make a little skin wheel there. We'll just give that a second for that to get numb. So I'm going to hand the actual syringe full of the local anesthetic to my assistant, the lovely Dr. Don Stater. Which side you do this kind of depends on how relatively ambidextrous you feel and how you know, well coordinated you feel using your non-dominant hand. So I'm going to go ahead and you may feel some pinching and pressure. I make a insert the needle right through the corner there. And now what I'm doing is you'll see on the screen the tenting of the tissue plane there, and I actually feel a lot of resistance. Oh, I just pop through the fascia lata there, and there I just pop, pop through the fascia iliaca. There we go. So go ahead, and what I'm going to have Dr. Stater do is inject about three or four cc's there, and we should begin to see a little accumulation. Yep, there we go. You see, what we, that's what we call hydrodissection. And what it's doing is it's starting to peel the fascia iliaca right off the surface of the iliacus muscle. And we're just underneath. And bef before I inject it, it's very important to have your nurse or your assistant pull back. Make sure you don't get a flush of blood and that you're not doing an intravascular injection. So now what we would do, we've, we've begun to hydrodissect the, the fascia right off the surface of the iliacus muscle. And then we've confirmed that we're not intravascular and we would just start injecting. So yep. that probably stops there. Okay. Um, and you can see that I, throughout this whole time, I've had a good view of where the femoral artery is, where the femoral nerve is, and where the femoral vein is. So I know that I'm well off that vascular anatomy. And we, at this point, under normal circumstances, would just go ahead and inject the whole 50 cc's of the local anesthetic. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of bathing everything in local anesthetic there. And this is all local anesthetics that's been inject injected. And again, that's the needle coming through those two fascial planes and sitting right there, right above the fascia iliaca muscle. So I'd like to thank uh, Nate, our patient, for uh, being a model and uh, putting up with that. Was that ter terribly painful? No. No. Did it hurt at all? So, so, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Pressure, yeah, yeah. And the last thing you want to do once you finish the procedure, really, I'll, we'll just put a Band-Aid over the area where we punctured it. And then you want to take a skin pen and you want to mark on there. You want to write like blocked 2.30 p.m. July 6th, you know, so there's no confusion when the patient goes upstairs to the floor or if they're going to the pre-op area when the block was performed because typically uh, most anesthesia services won't want to repeat the block during that same hospitalization. As you can see, fascia iliaca blocks are easy to perform, but most importantly, they're effective for our patients and result in better outcomes. You can learn more about fascia iliaca blocks and other procedures at the Colorado Alto Project website, www.cha.com/alto. 
Finally, on behalf of the Colorado Hospital Association, thank you for the care that you provide our patients.